What's up? What's up, everyone? You got a first timer, Tim Dunn. What's up, Tim? Welcome. You get the notification, Jason, with a huge thunderclap. There you go. Any other first timers here? I am in blue. I'm wearing blue today. I like that. Um, when I'm going to make a Sun Ra video, uh, Peter, um, I will at some point. I um, uh, I haven't done many individual composers or performers or improvisers videos. Um, matter of fact, I've done very few, really. I've talked about Coltrane. I've talked about Charlie Parker. I haven't done videos specifically on them. Hey, Tom. Um, I've done videos on Wes Montgomery and Pat Metheny and done videos on a lot of composers. But... Uh, I mean, I've, if I've done a video on Miles Davis, talked about Miles Davis a lot. So I don't know. I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll do. There's just so, you know, so little time. That's why I, um, that, that's why it's hard for me to, to come on here at night because uh, I'm, I'm, you know, constantly working on stuff. Um, I did not see the horse race, no. Um, Patrick, you're struggling on new chord voice in your guitar. Uh, getting it into your instinctual playing. It takes a few months. you got to practice the same stuff over and over uh, before it gets in your playing. Michael Brecker always said it took three months. I, I believe him. I think he's right about that. Although I'm, um, I'm getting stuff in my playing. I'm practicing every day. I, I practiced for a couple hours today. And um, what's up, Forty Four Scoots? Hey, back to Fairport, my hometown. Um, would I do a Santana video? Um. I don't know if I would do a Santana video, honestly. Um, well, I might do a Santana video. Yeah. Um, you mean like a uh, What Makes a Song Great? Rules for the site. No mention of 432. No asking how, how to get stems. No mentioning Greta Van Fleet. Enough said. <laughs> nice, Ron. Um, there's a great comment. I gotta find it here on uh, on my video from yesterday. How many of you realize that I made two video? I put out two videos yesterday. Totally uh, weird. Who who puts out two videos in a day? On my main channel, no soda stereo, Maurizio. Thank you. Um, something about my live stream. That you have to be careful on it. Oh, what was it? It was a great comment. Um, let's see here. It says, uh, um, hold on. This is this is great. Um, Oh, something you need to know if you subscribe to Rick is that he won't tolerate any funny business in the live chat. <laughs> he won't tolerate any funny business. That's uh, that's true. Is that you, Layla? All right, what do you want? I'm on live. Come on in. Really? Yeah, come on in. No, I said I'm on live. Come in. 
Have a seat for a minute. What do you want? No. Well, don't crawl. Let them see you. Come on. No. Daddy. What's going on? What do you need? I just need to tell you something. Okay, what do you want to tell me? You got to stand up and tell me. I can't hear you. Come on. Stand up. Please, I don't want to stand up. Why not? Okay, tell me what. Um, Excuse me for a minute. It's bedtime. I know it's bedtime. I'm on live, baby. But you have to come and help us brush our teeth and do no, all No, no, you can go brush your teeth on your own, baby, okay? I want you to come like, Layla. Listen, like you do. Layla, it's already late. It's 10 o'clock. I know. I Get want moving. You, I want you to do all of that stuff. Mama can help you. I don't want you Layla. Do you realize I'm on live right now, right? I know. Uh, come on, baby. Come on, get up. Please, please, I'll get up. No, I'll Layla. Please. I'm going to take your iPad away if you don't go. Daddy, please, I don't want you to. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, come on, can you stand up so people can see that I'm not talking to the floor? Stand up. This is Layla that's talking to me down there. Layla, you don't do that. You smile. <laughs> right? Okay, come on. Now go do it. You can do it on your own. Go on. Come on, Layla, go. All right, all right. Can you guys wait one second? I'll be right back. Come on. Come on. Okay. <laughs> oh man. Well, there you go. She needs help with the <laughs> with the toothpaste tube, squeezing it out. Um, oh, who's this PB guy here? Is this the joke? Okay. All right. Should I, is this guy gone or what? I'll put him in timeout. I don't know him. If he comes back on, does it? Uh, he's gone. Okay. Um, he can roll back the chat. But I, I put him in the five-minute room. Subi, did you get the thing I sent you? Um... Just played Layla last night. There you go. Um, I do have Eagle Stems, Greg. I have Hotel California, and I would love to do it. I would play it right now if it wouldn't get blocked. Um, there's a record that came out that just popped into my head called Superstars of the 70s. Anyone ever heard of that? It was a it was a four record set. Um, I have multi tracks for a lot of the synchronicity album. What's up, Ray? Hold on, I gotta turn that light out there too. Sorry, one second. This will be fast. You can even see me. I've been going back and listening to stuff. I don't know if it was KTEL. I was just looking it up just before I came on. I did a couple screenshots. It was uh, it was actually Warner Brothers. So I remember having this. Okay, so here's side two. Had Lonely Days by the Bee Gees, Fire and Rain, Truck In by the Grateful Dead, Where's the Love, Roberta Flack and Donny Hathaway, 
Love the one you're with, Stephen Stills, a roundabout. Now, this is an incredibly great... This this is just one of the one of the things. Then you have uh and I used to listen to this all the time. I love this record. Then you had uh here's another side had um um uh let's see. Listen to the music, do brothers uh Johnny Mitchell Woodstock. Wilson Pickett in the Midnight Hour, Arlo Guthrie, City of New Orleans. Uh, Aretha Franklin, Natural Woman, Allman Brothers. Let's see, I can't read these things. Faces Stay With Me, Rolling Stones Happy, Lucky Man, ELP. This, These are just a couple of the sides. This was a great collection that uh, I was really into. I mean, it had everything in it. There's so much variety. It was on one record. It was so eclectic. That's just, those were just three of the eight sides. And uh, so I started playing some stuff. I started playing a few of those songs at dinner tonight. Um, Lonely Days, though. What a great song. Man, um, the, but I mean, that, the fact that I had James Taylor and Aretha Franklin and and uh, I mean, it's just so eclectic. Alice Cooper. What? What else? Grateful Dead. The Bee Gees. Roberta Flack. Donny Hathaway. S Stephen Stills. Yes. I mean, that's unbelievable. That's right. The greatest hits of 2010s would have three or four songwriters. That's true. Um. I want, you know what? If it was Warner Brothers, Warner Special Products, I wonder if those were all Warner artists. Uh, I'm going to go back and research that. Where would I be without my woman? I know. That is That was a great, great... That was really a great, great tune. I, got, I haven't listened to that in a long time, in 40 years, something like that. Uh, let's see here. The record is where I first heard Schools Out. Schools Out is on that record. That's right. Uh, what about Brand X? Have I heard of Phil Collins' old band, Brand X? Of course I have. Um, come on. Of course. So many different styles put together back then. Um... Yeah, you don't see that anymore. Music is just so fragmented. Yet you've got the um, you've got all the stuff at your fingertips, though, right? I mean, all these songs I could put a Superstars of the '70s playlist together right now on Spotify. I could find all the songs. Lonely days, and lonely nights are the Bee Gees. Let me see here. The B, G's. Where is it here? Is it the B, G's? Yeah, hold on. Yeah.
totally has a Beatles feel. Speeds up. So I'm, this is blowing my mind that this record, we couldn't afford a lot of stuff when I was growing up. And I don't know where we got this compilation from, but um, I couldn't afford all these different records. I knew these songs because they were on the radio. But um, I just, that's just so incredible. Man. And it's so unusual, a song that speeds up, that changes, that you've got this acapella part at the beginning. Man, it's unbelievable. And when people think about the Bee Gees, I think they only think of the, you know, falsetto disco Bee Gees. And they don't realize that they were, you know, that they were real, you know, Beatles, Beatles oriented here in this part. Um... Uh, where is the love? I mean, look, look at these songs. These songs are amazing. I, I'm trying to find where some of the other ones. I'd love to find a list of these here. Um, superstars of the 70s. I see all the records here, but it doesn't really. It just shows the names of the stuff here. Side one. School's out. Summer breeze. Um... Oh, somebody's selling it here. Oh, here we go. This is awesome. Take it easy, the Eagles. Horse with no name. Big Yellow Taxi. These Eyes. Oh, man, the Guess Who. Great song. Uh, you got Van Morrison. You got ELP. What? Chicago. What? Uh, uh, wait, what is this? So this is interesting. So... I always loved the song Happy by the Stones. That's that's always been one of my favorite songs. Hey, John, so my brother's on here. John, remember that, that record we used to have, Superstars of the 70s? Um, that was, I was just talking about that, and I just played Lonely Days by the Bee Gees. Oh, yeah, so Bread... You ha John, you have that? You have the original one? You actually have the, the LPs? It's in your office? Oh, I want it. Can you send it to me? Um, okay, so here's my favorite bread song. I listened to bread um, at dinner tonight. I've been listening to this song a lot. It's, uh, this is, um, where is it here? It's on the greatest hits record, but it's not any of the ones that you think it is. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, here it is. Okay, I love this song, okay? Check it out.
Now you would never guess that that was bread, right? Um, it's unbelievable. That is very ca Terry Kath. Did you say that's a, that's a total Terry Kath style guitar solo. Um, and great drumming. That's it, total. It's all Bonham licks, right? Except uh, this is right around the same time as Bonham. Um, love that. I know. Isn't that crazy? That's bread. What's up, Brett? Um, oh, that's one of their best songs. They had some. I mean, Brett had some great songs. But uh, um, I do like Free, of course. Uh, let's see here, though. What, what else is on the superstars of the 70s? Um, I mean, they, they even had the doors on here. Is that right? Man, this is unbelievable. Uh, oh, here's the whole list, it looks like. Yeah. Okay, I'm taking a picture of this here. Um, let's see here. Had, um, man, a lot of stuff. Ramblin' Man, She's Gone, Hollow Notes. Um, uh, oh, it's hard to read. Smoke on the Water was on it. Um, they had everything on it. It's, it's unbelievable. It's a great. They had Fleetwood Mac Sentimental Lady. Is that right? Not, not one of their better songs. Um, not a bad song, though. Uh, this might get blocked. Yeah, I know. That's okay. Sundown. Oh, man. Let's do some Gordo here. I'm a massively big Gordon Lightfoot fan. Everybody knows that that's been on here. Bob Welch did that uh, the, the, uh, that, that track. Um, um, okay, let's do, what should we do here? Um, this is one of my favorite ones. Picking up the pieces of my sweet shattered dream I wonder how the old folks are tonight Her name was Anne and I'll be damned if I recall her face She left me now knowing what to do Every highway let me slip away on you Every highway Seen better days, the morning I have the blues, from my head down to my shoes. Every highway let me slip away, slip away on you. Great strings on their great leads. Times I love best. Great changes. I wonder if she'll ever do the same. Now the thing that I call living is just being satisfied. With knowing I got no one left to blame. Every highway I got to see you, my old friend. Every highway you've seen better days. The more I Every highway me slip away, slip away on you. Now somebody asked if, if he was before Jim Croce. They were really uh, contemporaries. I think Gordon probably put out records before Jim. Um, but um, uh, Jim Croce, oh, I've been listening to him lately. Um, it's hard to pick pick out really a, a um, there are so many um, oh this one like the pine trees lining the winding road 
I've got a dream I've got a dream Like a singing bird in the croaking toad I've got a dream I've got a dream And I carry it with me like my daddy did But I'm living the dream that he kept me Moving me down the highway Moving ahead so life won't pass me by Like a north wind whistling down the sky I've got a song I've got a song Like a girl who will and the babies cry I've got a song Then, of course, you have this. One of the greatest songs of that era, too. Listen how well this is recorded. This song has an unbelievable bridge. I'm gonna to go to the bridge here. Summer breeze. Check it out. Sweet days of summer, the jazz Incredible bridge. July is dressed up and prayer. And I come I mean, come on, right? It's unbelievable. And that's not even the only one that, that he had. They had a lot of great songs. Um, and then we have, by, um, by request here, I'm trying to think of which one to do here. Um... Let's see here. Man, there's so many good ones here. Um, Almost heaven. 
Blue Ridge Mountains, Shenandoah River. Life is older, older than the trees, younger than the mountains, growing like a breeze. Country roads take me home to the place. This is an incredible bridge, too. Hold on. All my memories. Oh, this is so good. Gather around her. Miner's lady, stranger to blue water. Dark and dusty, painted on the sky. Misty taste of moonshine, teardrop in my eye. Oh, that is so killer. Uh, my brother John reminded me of the Eagle and the Hawk, another John Denver one that is really a, uh, I love this song. Here's a live version. Check it out. I think that Rush got these chords for uh, hemispheres from this. I guarantee you that that Alex Lifeson got those chords for uh, for Xanadu, right? Those are right right out of there. Except he goes to F sharp with the open strings there, um, and then you have so this. Uh, we can't forget this one. Um, Oh, this is a great one, actually. This is this is a um, uh, well. You have this. She 
Chewing on pizza grass, walking down the road. Tell me how long you gonna stay here, Joe? Some people say this town don't look good in snow. You don't care, I know. Stronger than moonshine You're gonna go I know I mean, there's so many great songs here, but my favorite song on this first Yes record is this one. Nobody knows this one. This is one of the first songs I learned on the guitar. It starts with this sus chord. <laughs> Listen. This is on the first America record. That's a great song, John. I'm gonna ban you. I'm gonna ban my brother. Be the only time I can uh, get the last word in. Um, let's see here. And then um, one of my favorites. Let's see here if this is on here. If we're gonna do all these. Uh, uh, this is one of my favorites here. Neil. quality um, 
between these, the 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 difference in the uh, recording quality. I mean, listen how how forward that acoustic guitar sounds on that with Neil Young. I mean, it's really really amazing. Um, and you can see where the grunge guys really um, kind of got that. Um, you know, where they got their influences from. Um, and then you've got, let's see here, there's... Um, let's see here. Where's the one? Is this the one? No, that's not it. Um... Um, Elton John, let's see here, Elton. I mean, how do you pick a song by Elton? There's just too many. Um, this is one of my favorites, though. It's a little bit funny. I mean, we could play a uh, hundred Elton John songs here. Um, yeah, Dad would play Just the Way You Are about 40 times around our dad. <laughs> he would. John was saying our dad would play... Well, when Dad liked any song, John, he would play it about 40 times in a row. That's why we do this. <laughs> I never thought anything of it. My brother is saying that our dad, just the way you are, when he got that Billy Joel record, which is weird because my dad was in his 60s then and buying contemporary records, but um, he he would listen to a song 40 times in a row if he liked it, you know, never thought anything about it. And, um, and that's what we would do too. <laughs> we, we listen to these songs over and over. Um and then, hold on. Well, this right here is, uh, you know, you know, I, there's so many great ones here. Um, I'm sitting in the railway station Got a ticket for my destination mm -hmm. On a tour of one night stands My suitcase and guitar in hand And every stop is neatly planned For a poet and a one-man band Homeward oh, bound I wish I was Thoughts escaping home, when my music's playing home, when my love lies waiting silently for me. Every day is an 
endless stream of cigarettes and magazines. Mm -hmm. And each town looks the same to me, the movies and the factories. And every stranger's face I see reminds me that I long to be. Yeah, I mean the boxer too. Oh man. I am just a poor boy, though my story is seldom told. I have squandered my resistance for a pocket full of mumbles, such are promises. All lies and chess, still a man hears what he wants to hear and disregards the rest. Oh, amazing. When I left my home and my family, I was no more than a boy in the company of strangers in the quiet of the railway station landscape. Seeking out the poor quarters where the ragged people go Looking for the places only they would know Asking only workmen's wages I come looking for a job, but I, no I mean, unbelievable. How many of you uh, saw my Instagram? I did a post yesterday where I did a Scarborough Fair um, on my Instagram. Um, but then if you get even in the, uh, the mid-70s here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it a little different direction here. Because uh, I've been trying to figure out what what song to do for uh, for this band, and this is one of the ones I'm thinking about. I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, check this out. This is from Trick of the Tail. Check out the changes. So you got Steve Hackett playing guitar in this. This is his last record, I think. Mm -hmm. 
This song has an incredible bridge. I'm gonna go to the bridge. Oh, Check this out. It's called Ripples. It's on Trick of the Tail. Genesis, this is. So good. I mean, it just keeps going on. It's, uh, oh, let's see here. I guess while we're on prog rock, um, oh, 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 I just saw a great suggestion there, which I listened to today. Um,
Oh, that's so good, right? Come on, forget that. Uh, then we've got, somebody keeps asking me this. Um, let me see here. Um, hold on. I'm not sure how this works here with this uh, this thing here. What do we got here? Wait a second. Hold on. There we go. There we go. song great. I've got this. My brother John and I used to play that when we were kids. I don't know if I remember it. Um, uh, I can't remember the rest of it. That's how it starts, though. Um, I think I think I played the high part. Did you play the low part, John? I can't remember. We used to know both both those. I'm figured out in two two seconds, but um, it, it was funny. Somebody wrote a comment about how um, uh, Rick, why don't you figure? Why don't you uh, do more difficult songs, more songs like Tool in your What Makes This Song Great, um, Tool or Rush? More, why don't you do more of their songs? And I said, difficult. None of their songs are difficult. <laughs> I, I, none of these songs are difficult. If I was going to do something difficult, I would do an Alan Holdsworth song. But, I mean, come on. This is, uh, that's, you know, I just, I just laugh about that. This, this is all, um, very creative stuff. I love it. I love it. I mean, everything I've played is creative, but it's all simple. It's simple to me. But, uh, you know, why don't you do something, you know, something difficult, like Tool. It's like, that's not difficult. I'll give you difficult. Let's see here. We're some difficult here. This is difficult.
know, that's difficult. Mood for a day is not difficult, John. That's that's. I could play that when I was eight years old. No offense, Steve Howe, but this is a great song. This is the one I taught in my. Um, is this the one I did? That's difficult. Or this. So Donna Lee is a tune by Charlie Parker. That's, that's, that's the f first song on Jaco Pastorius' first solo record. Um, and it's amazing. His time feel is unbelievable. Um, how do you party to this, Don? Well, you just listen to it. Um, I could not play Mood for a Day when I was eight years old. <laughs> John, tell him. <laughs> I haven't played Move for a Day in... in uh... <laughs> Come on, man. You're joking, right? Uh. Uh. I mean, I can play it now, and I haven't played it in 40 years. It's like baby stuff. Come on. Now, that doesn't mean that it's bad. I'm just saying that my brother John could play it when he was eight years old. Like, everybody could play I think our mom could play it. <laughs> um... <laughs> um, but that... See, complexity... Um, it's kind of not exactly it's kind of different than that it's actually not different than that if I got my classical guitar out it's kind of different than that that's, that's a band hammer right there <laughs>
like, you know, baby stuff. People who don't play guitar can play it. That's that's kind of, uh, that, that's, you know, that's, that's basically, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> um, now, you know, there are some acoustic songs that uh, are, are a little tricky. That doesn't happen to be one of them. Uh, some of the Paul Simon songs are very, very difficult to play. Much more difficult than that to play. Steve Moore's stuff is hard to play. Uh, Mood for a Day is not hard to play. That doesn't mean that it's not a, not a cool song. I'm not that into that song, but I mean, just playing on Roundabout is incredible. Um, we're talking about Steve Howe, but being difficult, look, something that's difficult for one person may be incredibly simple for another person, you know, it's, it all depends on how much you practice, right? But, um, um, let's see here. Here's some hard acoustic. Nevermore, yes. LD Mail is not very difficult. Paco de Lucy has got some difficult stuff. Really hard. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's so many, and this is the other song that I that I love on this record. I love all the songs on here, but um, this is the first UK record with Holdsworth, Bill Bruford. I love this transition here. Okay, so Nicholas says, when did it become a competition? It's not a competition. Um, 
such classic Darwin attitudes. I would say Darwinian, but but uh, um, it's not a competition. It's when somebody asks me a question, and or when somebody says in a comment on one of the videos, basically, why are you wasting your time doing these simple songs like, uh, I don't know, something that I did recently on what makes this song great. Um, it was a couple ago. When you should be doing more, you could be doing more songs like Tool and things like that. And then my response was, well, Tool is not difficult. It's difficult if you um, if you can't count to, to seven, you know, um, it may be difficult. But it's all, you know, um, it, it's uh, making a song great. My whole point is these songs can be incredibly simple and be great songs. So it's not a competition. The point was that um, that that uh, you can have incredibly simple songs. One of my favorite bands is the Rolling Stones. Now, actually, the Rolling Stones has some um, very complex tunes. I think, like Angie, my favorite song. But um, 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 but it's not the complexity because the my point was that well none of this stuff is complex to me, it's just not you know if you know Prokofiev Prokofiev's uh, Third piano concerto is, is complicated. It's difficult. Not a lot of people can play a second piano concerto. It's more difficult. But but um, none of that means anything. It's like, is it, is it a great melody or great song or any or not? Complexity really doesn't... Um, the, I, that doesn't come into the equation when I'm trying to decide what what songs to do. I do songs that I like that I think are great, incredibly well-written songs. Great songs are not great because they're hard. Thank you, Rudis. That's right. <laughs> songs I admire mechanically. <laughs> That's pretty good, Don. Um, it's, it's subjective. It is, Nicholas. It's, subject, it's subjectivity. Yes, absolutely, it's subjective. And, and But difficulty, but my point was, was that when somebody says, why don't I do more difficult songs like Tool? And, I'm, and I, my point was, well, Tool isn't difficult to me. So none of the songs are difficult. It's not about being difficult. That's not why I pick songs for their difficulty. So um, nobody on the street can name a, a single Ingve song. I bet somebody out here can name an Ingve song. Um, uh, Steve, a Tears for Fears song that I would do is, um, I talked about the other night is, um, um, Head Over Heels, which is amazing. Look, my whole point of, of what makes this song great is to have a, uh, um, it's almost like if you took a survey class of of Western popular music, you know, from the 50s on. Now, I haven't done a lot of stuff from the 50s yet. I haven't gotten to that. But um, that that's kind of the whole point of this, is that 30 years from now, if somebody were to look back on these videos and 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 deconstruct, you know, and listen to my deconstructions of the songs. That's basically, that's what I'm doing essentially is I'm actually deconstructing them and teaching, arranging, um, uh, recording, um, you know, uh, it's not just about the melody. I don't talk about a lot about the lyrics because they're so subjective and I just don't want to get into those kind of things. Um, but, uh, 
You know, Nicholas, you'd love to see things on Charlie Parker. I have so many Bebop videos. Go watch my old videos. Who's, who's on here? Brett, how many Bebop videos do I have? 50? 75? Then I'm talking about Charlie Parker and John Coltrane and everything. I mean, seriously, how many Bebop? You'd like to see more Charlie Parker? Go watch my Principles of Melody, part one, two, and three videos. I've got so many Bebop videos, Charlie Parker videos, a ton. Exactly. I mean, at least 75. I'm talking, <laughs> you know, you could spend a month every day for hours listening, go, going through my, 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 uh, my Bebop videos. So I've devoted plenty of time to Charlie Parker. Um, I had a lot of information to get out, my brother says. When I was young, I used to drive our mom crazy. I did drive my mom crazy, our mom crazy. Um, so I should have a playlist for Bebop videos. Um, you know, just go to, go I do have a playlist it's called uh, improvisation I think it's I think that's what it is um, um y you know I I have I have so many improvisation videos I have so many live streams how many people on here there's 156 people on here now how many of you watched my video that I put out yesterday about my channel that was essentially a history of my channel. How many people? Um, I want to. I want to see how many people. Or if you haven't gotten to it, that's fine. But how many people watched it? Because not many people did. Probably more people on this channel. Um. <laughs> haven't watched it you should watch it it's the Beato TV guide that's what I should have named it um, well I mean this is it's not fair this isn't the channel to ask people on um Yeah, it's um please watch it because it's it's um it's the one about my channel. What did I call it? I put it out yesterday. I changed a history of Rick Beato basically it is, but it's it's a, it's a guide to my channel essentially. I I want to what did I call it? Can anybody tell me what I called it? I changed the name of it last night. And then I changed uh, because I was so fed up with the fact that nobody watched this video that I spent all this time on compiling from going through my 500 videos um, and then nobody watches it. I mean, I realize it's the summer and everything, but if you're gonna watch one video, watch the video that, how to use this channel, a guide to my YouTube channel. Thank you, Rich. Um, But I said I said this. That's that's right, Bill. Bill just said this. People when they discover my channel, only watch from there on, and then they say, and and I really get it. It blows me away when I when people say, "Hey, can you do a video on this?" And I said, uh, "I already did a video on that." You know. Then I get the ones that say, um, uh, "I didn't know you knew Jeff Berlin." What? You interviewed Steve Vai? It's like, uh, I forgot to put one person in there. Scott Henderson, I didn't put a clip in. Sorry, Scott. Guide to my YouTube channel. There there you go. Um, it's with any channel. Well, my channel is not any channel. I understand that, but um, but my channel is not any channel. Um, I, I know all you guys are 
or um, I should write a book. I did write a book, Tim, the Beato book. <laughs> Nicholas, no, 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 no. Don't worry about it. It's no sweat. Come on. Uh, and I wasn't directing that at you, Nicholas, at all. Trust me. Um, it's hard to find time to go back. I know. I know. But you know what? Here's the thing. If I stopped posting in four weeks, nobody would ever watch my videos. There you go. That's the truth. I mean, not no one, but people would not. Um, people would not watch my videos. Um, they wouldn't. People would move on. People move on, regardless. Then, then, then somebody would discover them. Would. Uh, uh, Somebody would discover them later on. Uh, it would be different, actually, if it wasn't on YouTube. Because um, um, my, I think my channel will live on eventually, Russ. Yes, I agree. This stream has been an emotional roller coaster. Best musical music channel right there, Chupa. Thank you. Who spends this much time on their um, making on YouTube? Other than, <laughs> I mean, I know there's probably some people, but. Um, I put in my time. You know, when I watch people that um, that kind of stop YouTubing, uh, Andrew Wong, who's a very good, has a very good channel. He's a he's more of a producer. He does a lot of keyboard, um, you know, a lot of, he does guitar stuff, but he does a lot of, a lot of EDM oriented stuff and does a lot of synth demos and things like that. And Andrew, about two months ago or so, said that he couldn't keep up with the two-day-a-week posting. Um, he has over a million subscribers. And um, and all of a sudden, not, once he sa said that, I never see his videos in my feed anymore. I subscribe to his channel. I subscribe to a lot of YouTubers' channels, and I stopped seeing his feed. Because he stopped on a regular basis, um, doing it on a regular basis, and he went and made an announcement. His subscribers each day went from 2,000 a day down to whatever, 600 now. And I was thinking like, man, you can't do two, two videos a week? I do two videos a day. I mean, yesterday I did a video on, on I did an Instagram video, I did a video on Facebook, I did two, I put out a video on my YouTube channel in the morning, then I did a live stream at night. So there you go. Boom! Spam above, what? Oh yeah, okay, sorry. Um, there we go. Um, so that's the, you know, Please never burn out. Don, this is the first live stream you've ever been involved with? No, it's not. You've been on here before. He's young. I'm retired. I'm not retired. I'm on here all the time. I make a living from here. From people buying my book, pretty much. Or my courses. Or my merch. If you haven't bought my book... There's 20% off, I think. That code's still going from yesterday. You can still buy it. 30, 30 minutes. RB123. Um, 
John, you have a tea time in a few hours. I'll tell you about my brother, John. So he used to go to bed at about 3.30 in the morning and then get up at 6.30 for work every day for years. And I'd always say, John, are you tired? No. He was never tired. Every day. He'd go to bed at 3.30 and he'd get up at 6.30. Or not even 6.30, probably 6 o'clock. Go to work. Never saw him yawn, ever. Never. Um, uh, so, that's very true. It must be a Beato trade or something. Imagine if my videos did not get demonetized. That's why I want people to watch my old videos that are monetized. So I can make some money on <laughs> these things. Um, anyways, all right, I'm going to go. You guys are great, the best. On gig nights, John stays up till 4. And you get up at what, 6.30 then? My brother's 52. Are you 52 or 50? No, you're going to be 52. And uh, no problem. I have plenty of monetized videos. Yeah, but nobody watches those ones. That's why I wanted to put that thing up for people to see what's on my channel to say, whoa, he's got all those interviews with these people? What? Or he's got all these film scoring videos? I didn't know that. Anyways, you're the best. Thanks. We'll see you later.